Hey there, Pokemaniacs, I am Blunty. Now, are you tired of Nintendo's ongoing stubbornness in refusing to bring a version of their beloved Pokemon RPG franchise to the modern mobile gaming platform of choice, i.e. smartphones and tablets? Well, so our pocket trend, apparently. Meet Micromon, a game very, very heavily influenced by Pokemon, and to a lesser but still quite noticeable level, Digimon. While the graphics, and in particular many of the monster designs, remind me more of Digimon, there's not even the slightest doubt that everything about this game is, depending on how kind you're feeling, either an unbelievably shameless rip-off of Pokemon, or, alternatively, a lovably crafted and carefully delivered, surprisingly well-polished homage to Pokemon. The towns, paths, location, trees, grassy patches that hired wild monsters to battle and catch are all instantly familiar. So too are the NPCs scattered throughout the world who will either challenge you to battle or offer up hints to your quest or just vomit up gibberish. The basic plot and quests are standard RPG fare too. Go here, find this, talk to that person, go back and deliver this, hunt down this missing thing that's important for some reason. You all know the drill. Very standard, very straightforward RPG quest type stuff. You are some dude or some girl sucked into this digital world by chance or fate. You're given a monster of your own and sent out into the world on a mission to collect and battle and solve mysteries and explore and blah blah blah. You can and indeed must gather a small team of interchangeable battle monsters, most of whom will grow and evolve at least once and have elemental themed abilities and moves. Water, fire, earth, wind, I'm sure this is all sounding very, very familiar. Familiar too is the battle style. Turn based, of course, each monster has a set of four moves it can know at once. You've got a bag full of potions and stuff for buffs and debuffs and stat boosting and healing. But please Nintendo, don't sue! These are clearly Micromon, not Pokemon. And the main character is not a Pokemon trainer, it's a Micromon Tamer. T-A-M-E-R, not trainer, Tamer. It's very, very different. And you don't use Pokeballs to capture monsters, you use these chip thingies. Very clearly different things, you see. <laughs> anyway, I clearly don't have to describe this game in detail. You can simply very safely assume it looks, feels, smells, tastes and sounds quite a lot like those famous games about pocket monsters. There are, however, a few key differences. For a start, the damn thing is one of those vampiric games with so-called microtransactions built in. So, of course, much of the game will revolve heavily around pressuring you into feeling like you need to pay to win, or at the very least, pay to get the best monsters. There's a couple of different in-game currencies. Coins, which are used much like Poké Dollars are, you buy potions and the Pokéball equivalents and such, but there's also diamonds, which you can spend on golden eggs, which you can then spend on playing a game, which will then let you have a chance to randomly be awarded a new monster, a rare monster, and one with good stats by default. You can also spend real money to buy the chips, i.e. the Pokeballs. So, in order to catch them all, so to speak, you will be spending real money in your chase to obtain all 130 Micromon. You can even spend real money to buy the in-game money, of course. There are also other microtransaction options, like being able to buy different looking avatars. Now, to be fair, the game so far for me hasn't been too aggressive about the whole microtransaction thing. But it's easy to imagine that later in the game, perhaps, you know, once you're all good and properly hooked, that those might become, well, much more tantalizing. Another difference between this game and Pokemon is the ability to actually refuse battle with another trainer. Uh, sorry, excuse me, another tamer. <laughs> so that's nice if your team has had the snot kicked out of it recently. Another quite significant difference is that here there's a hard end. There's a game over. Black screen, white text, the whole deal. If all your Micromon are knocked out in battle, it's black screen game over. Not the Pokemon style. Wake up in a daze at the nearest Pokemon Center after blacking out with half your money gone. But done. You're finished. You done effed up, son, and now you're dead. You can, though, restart your game from the last save point. So saving often is going to be a habit you want to get into, but also be careful about when you save, because I imagine it's possible you might just save in a condition that you just can't win past. Maybe you're down to your last monster and 2 HP left and you've got no potions and you're half a world away from a healing station. Yeah, don't save then, because you're, you're, you're just stuffed if you do that, really. All in all, though, with my personal complete distaste of the vile garbage pile that is microtransactions, 
The game seems very solidly built. There's no denying that it looks wonderful. It's clean and bright and crispy and the art is nice. The battle animations, although limited, look nice. The monsters are kind of cool looking and the battle system seems very solid. The game controls very nicely, although of course walking around the overworld using an on-screen D-pad style thing is a slightly clumsy affair here as it is in every game that uses one, but it's not too bad. There's even an online battle arena where you can battle other real people playing the game. Now, as far as Pokemon wannabe games go, this is by far the best one I've come across. It's clearly had a lot of effort and time ploughed into it. It is not just a cheap knockoff to try and cash in on Pokemon success like so many other Battle Monster games have been. God, there's some terrible ones out there. Terrible. Micromon, while undeniably highly derivative of its inspiration, has still managed to feel like a game worth giving a go. On the iTunes store, it'll cost you a buck twenty-five Australian to buy in, also known as ninety-nine cents in Yankee Doodle money. And should you wish to indulge in the in-app purchases, you can spend anywhere from a dollar at a time all the way up to one hundred dollars on a single purchase. Hell, I might even recommend the purchase of the game if only to show Nintendo how many of us would like a Pokemon game for our iPhones, even if they too did the damn microtransaction thing for Pokeballs and TMs and stuff. Not that I want to give them any ideas, but you know. <laughs> On its own merits, so like Pokemon before it, of course, this game lends itself very nicely to mobile play. You can pick up and play for a few minutes while you're waiting for a train or something, or you can curl up on the couch and burn through it for an hour or more. Now, I've only just tipped my toe in so far, but yeah, on first blush, well worth the dollar or so to buy in and check it out for yourself. It's a nicely put together game, it seems. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.